After testing the new Soltec Groove for four months, it is time for my comprehensive review. Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Proof is in the pudding is one of my taglines and it really means that talk is cheap, I want to see results. So when Soltech reached out to me asking if I want to test the new grow light, I knew that I need to give this grow light a little bit of time until I can really give you my honest opinion on it because, well, proof is in the pudding. I gotta cook the pudding. Now this pudding has been cooking for over four months, so I think I'm in a good position to give you my honest feedback on this product, discuss any pros and cons and so on. But before we go into that, let's have a look at what happened four months ago and understand the reasoning why I'm even testing out these new grow lights in the first place. Today I want to upgrade my IKEA cabinet. Now don't get me wrong, there's nothing really broken with it, but there are a few things that I would do differently if I were to set it up from scratch again. Specifically, the lighting situation. All right, let me give you some background. So when I set this up uh, three years ago, actually exactly three years ago, I was still very new to the plant game and, and I didn't know that much about grow lights. I just knew that this particular company that I ended up going with called Mars Hydro, uh, actually reached out to me and I've heard from other growers that they've used this company before so I was pretty confident in uh, going ahead with that and look it's been working really well this grow light has been on every day for the last three years for 12 to 14 hours and there was not a single issue so far so yeah I, ca I can't fault the light in itself it does exactly what it was advertised to do but I don't know if it's really the best solution for the IKEA cabinet in itself. Now, three years further, I feel like the plant community has come so far. I feel like there's way more products available at a much nicer design with much more functionality um, and specifically catered for things like cabinets these days because this hobby has just exploded over the last three years. So, when Soltec reached out to me about their newest product, the Groove, I thought that would be a good opportunity to see what I would do if I would have to set up an IKEA cabinet from scratch these days. Would I still go for the same products or would I switch things around? Full disclosure, I did not pay for these lights. Soltec sent them to me for free for me to test and review them as part of this video. And the reason why I agreed with it is because they seem to be the perfect solution for a problem that I had with my IKEA cabinet from the beginning. While I said, yes, it's working perfectly fine, there are a couple of things that actually really annoy me. Number one, this light is super, super bright. Not sure how that translates on camera, but it really illuminates the entire room. <laughs> mm. It's very bright and you cannot dim this light. So to compensate for that, I actually built a little shade cover, or actually I didn't build this, um, a lovely couple that I met at the plant collectors fair modeled their IKEA cabinet after mine. They built a little shade cover for themselves and they made one for me as well, which I really appreciate because before I just had like a piece of shade cloth on a coat hanger, which wasn't the nicest option. So that's the first problem. It's actually just too strong for the cabinet. I have small plants in here. It's my small plant nursery, right? They would burn if I wouldn't protect them with the shade cover. The second issue I have, and that is just purely me being pedantic, is the light source comes from the top. Well, yeah, that's great. It's kind of in line with what the sun does. I don't like it. I like having my light source coming from the front because, well, leaves will face the light. So if the light source comes from the front, the plants will have a nice display side. So when you look at it like this, it doesn't look as empty. I feel like when you look at it front on, the IKEA cabinet looks quite empty. You almost need to like peek into it from up here, you know what I mean, to see all the nice leaves. Those are really the two things I dislike about it. It's too strong, meaning that an entire top section over here is kind of useless and I had to build another shade cover, not looking the greatest. And number two is I don't like the light source coming from above because that basically means way too much light here, 
not enough light over here and all the leaves are facing up rather than to the front. So when Soltech reached out with these groove grow lights and let me just show you one, they're these sleek little lights that match the aesthetic of the IKEA cabinet perfectly as well. I thought that might be a great opportunity to improve on what has been bothering me for a little while. Okay, let me take you inside the IKEA cabinet. So you can see this is the grow light up there and then the shade cover. Very, very bright up here. Because the light is coming from the front, you're almost like best to look at the plants from here. And then the bottom isn't getting quite as much light, which it's hard to tell by the uh, with the camera adjusting for the light. But look at this very custom over here, for example. It looks great if you look at it from this angle. If you look at this from this angle, it looks meh, right? So, same with this Florida Beauty, look at it. If you look at it from this angle, besides the fact that it's way overexposed, it looks great. From this angle, it just looks a little bit empty. Let's have a look what it says. So it's called the Groove LED Bar by Celtec. It's a full spectrum light which grows and supports your plants with a warm white light that enhances your living space. I have unpacked the other one already. Of course, I was too uh, impatient when it got delivered and the light color looks amazing. It looks very, very beautiful, very warm, not as bright and in your face as the one behind me. Again, I'm not too sure if that's gonna translate on camera later, because obviously the camera adjusts like white balance and exposure and so on. Quality construction was created with a solid, built to last aluminum body and high performing LED to ensure consistent and long lasting function. Let me show you the specifications so I don't need to read them all out. So specifications, it's 11 watts, so that's fairly weak. Actually, let me compare that with this grow light. So this is the TS600, it has 100 watts. So each light is 11. So I'll end up with 22 watts, so only about a fifth of the wattage. What that really means is that these lights are much weaker, which is exactly what I'm after. So these lights are not designed to illuminate a huge surface, right? These are really like under shelving lights. Uh, they're supposed to be used at a really short distance to the plants, which I thought was perfect for the IKEA cabinet, specifically because I want to mount it at the front, actually. You think I should turn the light off behind me? Is that a bit better? I think that's better. Sorry, I just had to turn off the light behind me. I feel like it would be annoying. Alrighty, so this is the light in itself, which is really, really cute and small. Beautiful, let's have a look. Now, it comes with the power cable. It is an American company, so it comes with an American power cable, but they included this Australian plug for me, which is great. So this is a really new product, and I think they're only, I think they're only at batch three of uh, manufacturing at the moment, so I think this is like pretty, fresh and like new. Um, alrighty, and then it comes with these two mounting brackets. So one mounting bracket over here with the power cable and then the second mounting bracket without the power cable. So basically they just go on either side here and here and you can then mount these under a cabinet or anywhere you want. Now the good thing is once you mounted them on here, you can rotate the light 360 Right, some screws in there as well. Right, um, let's have a look what was in here. Ah, that's a good idea. So this is like, a, if you want to screw it in the wall instead of using the adhesives, this is your ruler and it gives you the two dots where to drill. That's pretty cool. Very handy. And we've got little sticky things for cable management as well, which I really appreciate. Australian plug. Okay, let me turn off the other light. All right, so this is the only light that's on now. Look how dark it is in here. Okay, this is the light. I think it's pretty cool. Let's do it this way. So you can straight away see it's not as harsh, or at least the way that I see it in the viewfinder right now. Um, really nice warm color, not as bright as the previous one, and definitely not as strong, which is in this case, 
desired, right? The other one was too strong. I get a 100 watt grow light, but then I need to put a shade cover over it because it's too strong. Might as well go with a weaker one, saves me electricity as well, right? So it's touch operated, and if I read the instruction booklet correctly, tapping twice is on off. Okay, oh, hang on, I think I can't touch it in two ends. There you go, that's off, that's back on, and then touching once and then holding is dimming. Let me see. Oh, there you go. You should be able to see that. Beautiful, and then tap once and hold to increase it again. I think that's it. All right, it looks great. But of course, proof is in the pudding. So, okay, let me just get rid of all of the plants in here. Alrighty, so let's take this shade cover out. So this was the shade cover, like a little picture frame. And I just connected that these L brackets. Uh, let me just turn off the fan so it's not so noisy, but the fan is staying. Um, the grid at the back is staying as well, there's no point in fixing that, but I need to get rid of this light, so I need to get rid of my cable management. Okay, I got this, and then this was really disconnected with cable ties. Back then when I connect, I just didn't know how to connect it, so I just drilled holes into the top of the cabinet. <laughs> so I could just cable tie the lights. Alright, here we go. Might as well use this opportunity and clean a little bit. Alrighty, so my idea was that I put it on the door so that when I then close the door, it's right centered. The other option would be on either side, but I didn't really like that. The other option would be one at the top and one on the door. I don't know, but I suppose they're just um, attached using adhesives. I can always. Uh, change it later. So let's just go with my initial idea. Okay, snap both magnetic mounting brackets onto the end of the light. Okay, it seems super easy. <laughs> okay. Now I do need to also consider cable management. So I probably want cable management to go down, right? So if I have one light here and one light here, I want to have the cable bit at the down. Should I just try? I don't know. I feel like I'll know so much more in a few months time. But that's why I'm doing it now. So I can experiment and share my findings with you. Right? So you don't have to make the same experiences. So I already cleaned this uh, panel. Uh, make sure it's dust free. Now there's just little adhesives on the back of these. It's obviously not focusing, little adhesive that you can peel off. Uh, here goes nothing. All right, and then just press down for 15 seconds. I reckon that was 15 seconds. I didn't even count. Should be good enough. All right, down here. I can put the second one here. Let's just do it, huh? 15, I'm gonna count. There you go. All right, Bradley. Look at him. Bradley is just sitting out there on the porch, looking at the birds in their tree. Brad, Bradley, do you want to help? No. Okay, so all the cables now need to go through that hole down there. So I'm super unorganized today. <laughs> Where's the other cable? Oh, right here. Okay, stupid me. So I've got them um, on. <laughs> so this is the Australian lab that I have an adapter where two go into one because I'm gonna have them on like a smart plug to make sure that they turn on and off uh, every day by themselves. So I don't need to do all of this. That goes down here. I'll do that in a sec. Feeding back into the cabinet. Here we go. When I first set up the cabinet, I drilled like this really terrible hole in there. But it's been working, huh? I'll plug it in, let's see if they turn on. Oh, hang on. 
Oh, I haven't, <laughs> sorry, I haven't actually plugged them in. Uh, yay, here we go, number one. Number two. Ooh, ooh, I like this. <laughs> I see my vision. Oh, oh yeah, now I'm excited. Nice, 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 okay. Okay, my friends. Wow, something goes right and I'm instantly like major excited. Okay, so let me quickly do cable management. Ta -da! I'm actually really excited that it worked exactly the way that I expected it to work. So let me show you this again. So you saw how I mounted the brackets on there. So I can now rotate the light 360 degrees while it's still mounted in there. Really cool, so I can, and it's touch, right? So double tap, turns on and off, and tap once and then hold, and it will dim, apparently. Hang on. There you go, it will dim. Let me just dim this right down just for the sake of the video, because then it will not be as bright for you to look at. But what that also means is like once I got it closed, I can put one to the right, one to the left, you know, I can kind of rotate it around. So it gives me a lot of flexibility. And let's put some plants back in and I'll show you those a little closer. You guys know I used the IKEA cabinet for my small plants and I hope this lighting situation is gonna be okay. This is Philodendron patriciae. Alocasia, no, this lighting situation is not okay. Oh, beautiful, nothing beats natural light. So this is Alocasia odora, I think. And this is a fried egg over here. So I've got these. Here we've got a little Alocasia hybrid that's not doing too well. And we've got two baby Alocasia, not Alocasia, Anthurium. Sorry, this was also Anthurium. And over here we've got two baby Anthurium Luxurians. Ah, it's so cute, no? And this is just a pot of random Anthurium seedlings. As you can see, it's been in there for a long time, since 20th of April 2022. So over a year, they were at the very bottom of the cabinet getting very little light, so. All right, uh, Anthurium cyanuronoidi, uh, I don't remember, AJ gave it to me the other day, cyanuroi, cyanuroi, cyanuronides, something like that. And this one is another hybrid I made with a friend. It was my queen pollen with um, a Magnificum seed parent. Mm, look at this tiniest Florida ghost, how cute, very ghosty. The teeny tiniest Illamani eye. Oh, so cute. And this is the tiniest little variegated Milano. Yes, I've been on a shopping spree recently. <laughs> it was my birthday. I need to spoil myself, no? Alrighty, this is the Syngonium Frosted Heart. And look at the roots. In front of my black shirt here, look at the roots that have grown out of there. And some are in the pole already as well. And this one is my Florida Beauty. Really, really happy with the progress uh, this plant has made. We have two queen propagations. I've got my little rescue rare cosm. I'm doing a separate video on that, so I'm not sure if you would have seen it by now. Variegated Adansoni I attempt number three. It's awfully white again. And she will have to move out of here really shortly. I'm waiting for this leaf to unfurl, that's brand new. But eventually she just has to move out of there. She has taken up way too much space. Um, but yeah, spring is coming, so not a bad time to start moving her out. Alrighty, that's it, so let's put them back up again. Because I want to start at the brightest setting first. They're only 11 watts, so they're not super, super bright in the first place. Oh, I like this. I 
feel like on camera it doesn't really look all too different but it is a much more even spread of light rather than having this really bright spot at the top and then really dark at the bottom like I mean look at how much light the bottom bits now get and forward facing right but I can use the cabinet all the way to the top now right so if some of these plants at the top grow a little bit taller they have more space whereas before from here up was reserved for the light itself huh? Alrighty, I'm really excited about this. It worked so much better than I expected. And if you watched any of my previous videos where I build or install something, it's usually much more chaotic. This was really smooth. So that's a good start to the experiment, but proof is ultimately in the pudding. So let the plants do their plant thing and grow and we'll assess the results of this in um, a couple of months, maybe weeks, I don't know, it depends on how long it takes for me to see some results and then I can share all of my experiences with you including some pros and cons of these products. So I will see you when I see you. Hello, quick update. So it's been about a couple of weeks and um, one thing that didn't work and I noticed really, really quickly was the sticky bits. So I suppose because, uh, because the IKEA cabinet is such a high humidity environment, I think the sticky bits that came with the lights were just not really coping that well. Um, I also tried the M3 sticky bits, you know, that you usually use with the M3 hooks. Um, that also didn't work, so the lights came crashing down. Luckily, none of the plants were harmed, but I then decided to just go for it and drill these into here. Um, I did that last weekend, and sorry, I forgot to film. But I also made one additional change. I kept one of the lights on the door over here, so that kind of gives these plants down here a little bit of light coming from the front, obviously only when the door is closed and the other light I mounted at the top over here. You can see, but because I can twist them around, I can just really conveniently twist them a little bit inside so that when you're looking at it from the outside, you're not being blinded by that light over here. While we're here, I have to show you the new queen leaf. Look at this new leaf on the queen and it's still inflating. It's gonna be a stunner. I also moved the varicosum out and the rugosum in, why not? So yeah, very happy with that setup uh, right now. I think it still utilizes all that space at the top quite nicely and these plants at the top can grow up. So for example, my alocasias and so on are quite like their growth pattern to face upwards anyway. But then further down over here, we've got like the queens, I'm gonna the queen has to move eventually. I'm just going to have three or four grow vertical poles at the bottom. So I think then the light coming from the front is really going to optimize that. Got to give it a little bit more time, but so far so good. One other positive is that it isn't producing as much heat as the previous grow lights were, which well in winter kind of helped heating the greenhouse a little bit, but in summer, it was getting really, really warm in there if it's already quite warm outside of the cabinet in the first place. So I'm also less worried about uh, anything overheating in there, specifically over summer. But so far, so good. Nothing has died. A few leaves have grown, but obviously they were already kind of in the making anyway. So yeah, gotta cook a little bit more pudding, but I'll see you soon. Alrighty, and here we are. So it's been four months and we have moved house in between, but I don't necessarily think that moving house impacts the cabinet in itself. Doesn't really matter whereabouts I put this cabinet because it comes with its own lights and it's insulated and its own airflow. It's almost like it is its own little um, ecosystem. So I don't necessarily think the apartment that I live in uh, would really impact the results. What is more impactful is what is inside the cabinet, which is obviously the lights, and that's what we're here to discuss. And let's talk about the specs first, and I'm gonna give you my pros and cons. The specs are pretty easy because they're all on the box, so I can just show you that. There we go. 
So those are the specifications if you want to take a quick screen grab. Now not all of these numbers mean a lot to me. I'm not necessarily super fussed about the numbers because as I said in the intro, proof is in the pudding. I don't care if a grow light on paper looks amazing. I want to install the grow light. I want to grow plants using the grow light and I want the plants to tell me the story. So we obviously need to look at the plants to assess whether uh, these specs mean anything. But what I do want to point out is the color temperature which is 3000 K and that just means that it looks really nice. I absolutely hate these purple blue grow lights or hate grow lights that are way too bright and kind of make a really harsh atmosphere. I want it to be a nice warm glow. And then the lifespan is 5000 hours. I have this on for 14 hours a day. So this should technically last around about 10 years. Uh, but you do have a five year warranty with this uh, in the first place. I have this grow light on for 14 hours a day. So it turns on every morning at eight and it turns off every night at 10. Your plants also need darkness. That is no different to the previous grow light that I was using. So the grow light hours would not have any impact on the plants in here. So let's just have a look at the plants because they're ultimately deciding whether or not this was a success. Right, and I'll take you closer with B-roll a little bit as well, but, and it's always really, really hard and challenging to film with so much light, right? But I really enjoy having one light on the door over here and having one light at the top. I think it just gets these plants at the top to still kind of face up. So I've chosen plants like alocasias, for example, that's their natural growing pattern anyway, but a plant like my queens over here or my uh, frosted heart, uh, or even my Florida Beauty. I think my Florida Beauty is one of the prettier ones in there at the moment. They are now pointing forward. So I can really see these beautiful leaves. Like look at this nice sectoral fenestration over here. So I can now really see these leaves so much better from the front as the plant is hanging in there rather than these leaves always pointing upwards. So uh, due to the light coming from above. Uh, another good one over here, my Patricia, for example, I think this is really nice. This was the tiniest plant when I got it. So all of this growth would really be a result of this grow light supplementing the light. I mean, these really nice elongated leaves, um, they work perfectly with the way that the light is uh, positioned, right? So in a nutshell, it did what I wanted it to do. It enabled the plants to still grow. So there's clearly enough light in there for the plants to grow, but it enables them to grow and face in a direction that is more aesthetically pleasing for me to look at. So I'm going to keep this setup because this is exactly the setup that I was aiming for. But if I would have not seen enough growth, I would have also not been hesitant to put the old grow light back. And I don't remember when this plant moved in and out of the greenhouse, but this plant used to be in my IKEA cabinet as well. And these leaves at the bottom, can you see how long these petioles are over here? Maybe not, maybe I'll point it this way. Can you see how long these petioles were down here? That is because this plant was at the very bottom of the cabinet when the light source came from the top only and these petioles were just looking for the light. Eventually I had to move it out of the greenhouse and look at these uh, leaves, uh, these petioles over here. Now this is no longer in the greenhouse so the higher light exposure has nothing to do with the actual grow lights. I just wanted to show you a principle how much shorter these petioles are because it now actually gets sufficient natural light. It was just a shortcoming of the previous approach. Having only one grow light at the very top is obviously going to cause the plants at the top to receive a lot of lights and the plants at the bottom to receive quite little light. The bigger the plants at the top get, the more they shade the plants at the bottom and so on. So fundamentally not an issue because eventually the bigger plants move out anyway, but it wasn't necessarily using the full cabinet to its full potential. Obviously, depending on the plants that you're growing in your cabinet as well. Maybe you have some plants that will appreciate the lower light, but with my aeroids, I want them all to receive as much light as possible without burning them so that they can actually optimize photosynthesis and hopefully grow as large as possible as fast as possible. So that is my first positive. 
it does what I wanted it to do. It makes the plants grow, it passed the pudding test. So that's a non-negotiable. If the product doesn't pass the pudding test, there's no point in using it in the first place. But now that it did, let's have a look at some other features of this product that I actually really liked. I really liked how it is dimmable and touch operated. Now I personally make no use of this because I have it at the highest setting and it is uh, plugged into a smart plug so it turns on and off by itself. But if you would use these in, let's say for example, your kitchen under a cabinet and so on and you want to quickly turn them off or on based on you being in that room maybe maybe it's uh, maybe you don't want to have it on while you're cooking or something like that then um, I think that touch operated uh, functionality is a really cool feature it's great that it's dimmable because that means you can use it at a for a larger variety of plants irrespective of their light requirement I find these lights not to be super super strong in the first place so I personally don't think I have any application for them at the lower setting. It is a very aesthetically pleasing product. You guys know that aesthetics are a key factor in my entire plant hobby. Like this whole hobby uh, started because I wanted to use plants to decorate my apartment with. What's the point in me decorating my apartment with great plants if I then put the ugliest grow light in history right next to it beaming purple light at it? So that is just not aligned with my aesthetic preference. That is not how I would like to decorate and design my house. But the sleek black design uh, re fits really well with the cabinet in the first place, but overall my aesthetic preference. And the light that it gives up is also very aesthetically pleasing. So I mentioned before the light color is 300K. So it's nice and warm. And the CRI, which is color rendering index is 90 which means that the colors that we perceive under this grow light is very very close to the light that we would perceive or the colors that we would perceive if these plants um, were hit by uh, sunlight instead so it's gonna give you a true experience when you look at the plants the plants look just like they would in nature and this is in my office my desk is right here I sit next to this for 10 hours a day so I want to look at something pretty <laughs> They're very nice and small and they fit in every space. So they fit under every kitchen cabinet, under a shelf, in the IKEA cabinet and so on. Um, so I think that's really handy and I really love the mechanism in which you attach them. So having the two clips and then being able to uh, clip it in and out. I think that is really, really handy. You also have the flexibility to spin it 360 degrees. So that way I was able to, you know, point this light over here a little more backwards so it doesn't blind me when I sit in front of it and so on. It's made from aluminium uh, or aluminum if you're in America, which is obviously a high quality product. So as a result of that, I would expect this to last much longer. And aluminium is usually really good at, um, what's the word? I can always forget, dispersing. I think that's the word, dispersing heat. So basically it takes the heat away from the LED um, and well, disperses it into the IKEA cabinet and so on. So that should also then help the actual LED panel to last longer. And overall, it is not the strongest, it's only 11 watts each, so there's way less chances of my plants burning in here if I compare that to my previous grow light option where I had to build its own shade cover to stop the plants from burning. So less chances of things going wrong in here. Which is a good segue into the negatives because, well, those grow lights not being super strong is also the reason why I had to replace one previous grow light with two new grow lights. Now, of course, having two also enables me to have that split between one light source coming from the top and one coming from the front. So it is working with my aesthetic preference, but at the end of the day, you still need to buy two grow lights instead of just having one that uh, was working before. So I do need to point that one out. I'm also lucky, let's say, that this IKEA cabinet is quite a small space. So these grow lights don't have to be super strong because they're quite close to the plants anyway, right? Quite a few leaves are very, very close to the, specifically that one on the door over here, with, especially if they have decent sized petioles uh, kind of pushing forward. But if you have a kitchen cabinet or some sort of shelving and you have quite large spaces between the shelves, then these lights might not actually be strong enough to really make a difference. 
So just keep that in mind. But Soltech also has some stronger options available. Like we've got the Vita light bulb that is I think 20 watts and I've got the uh, Aspect which is 40 watts, which is super, super strong. So they do have other options. Obviously this was the option that worked best for my small space. If now actually one of the Soltech lights is more expensive than my previous grow light. Um, so it is a much more expensive setup. I understand and where the pricing is coming from and why it's more expensive than the other product. Um, and I personally think it is worth it given the aesthetics of it. Um, but if you're purely after a solution that makes your plants grow and you don't care what it looks like and you don't uh, have any sort of restrictions from a space perspective and so on, maybe the price being higher uh, might be something you need to consider. And lastly, closely related to the pricing as well is that the distribution of the Soltech products. So if you're in America, lucky you, they are an American company and it's very easy to get your hands on Soltech grow lights in America. I'm from Australia and unfortunately shipping to Australia is more expensive than the product in itself. Now I've spoken to Soltech about it and they are working or they're hoping they can work on a distribution solution in Australia to drastically reduce the shipping costs but at this stage that has unfortunately not been sorted out yet. So the limited distribution and the high shipping costs that comes with it uh, I also need to point out as a negative. Alrighty, I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the whole process of setting it up all the way to seeing the final result. And I hope my pros and cons help you make a decision on whether or not you would consider these lights. If you want to learn more about the lights, uh, please check out the Soltech website. And if you would like to purchase them, I can offer you a 15% discount using the code SydneyPlantGuy and my link down below. Thank you so much Soltech for letting me test out these lights. And thank you so much for watching the video. Like subscribe and leave a nice comment and I'll see you next time. Bye!